Welcome back to another lesson for Swift for Beginners. In the previous lesson, we covered functions. In today's lesson, we're going to be covering classes and structs. And this is kind of where things get even more interesting than how interesting they are already. So without further ado, we're going to be picking up exactly where we left off. So let's get into it. So what I want you to do is start by getting rid of all those function stuff that we uh, had going on for our last lesson. And let's uh, title this classes and structs. So what is a class and what is a struct? So they're very similar, but they also have some key differences. So if you recall, in a prior lesson, I was doing something that looks like this. So what the heck is this class thing? So in computer science, and this is a little more agnostic of Swift, and this is a general um, fundamental, I would say, of computer science, and it's applied in Swift, is uh, object-oriented programming. The notion of object-oriented programming came, came about in the 80s, and the, and the idea is everything in the world around you can be modeled as an object. So you might have a chair, and you might have a table, and both of those things fall under the object category of uh, furniture. And furniture, let's, let's say that furniture is made out of wood, it might fall under a category of things made out of wood. So there's this natural hierarchy to the way that things are modeled in the real world. So some brilliant guy one day was like, okay, let's, let's write our code this way too. So you can model an object as a class. And similarly, you can model an object also as a struct. And I want to explain, um, I want to ex exemplify two concepts here. One, what the difference between these two things are and the notion of inheritance. So let's get rid of this for now. So let's say, let's stick with our example of the furniture and chair and let's, let's create uh, something that's similar, an, an, an analogy, if you will. So let's create a class called vehicle, right? And this class vehicle, right below it, let's create a class called car. Well, a car is a vehicle, right? So let's come up here and put a colon in front of the car and put vehicle there. So now I, I want to make sure you don't get confused that a car uh, is this isn't a instance like a variable of the type vehicle, but this is kind of similar. We talked about types. A car is a type of vehicle. So in essence, what we're saying is this car hierarchically is a subclass of a vehicle. So now that's the proper terminology. This is a class. This is also a class, but this is this car class is a subclass of vehicle. Now let's keep going. Let's do BMW. Now BMW is a subclass of a car, and a car is a subclass of a vehicle. Now we can we can keep going as far down uh, into this into this kind of endless rabbit hole as we want, but this is the idea of inheritance. Um, and every single thing is built with inheritance in Swift and in most programming languages. So if you can imagine, let's say a button. So in Swift and iOS, a button's class is called UI button. You can imagine a button has a couple of similarities with other things, right? It's a user interface element. You can see it. Maybe the default size is a rectangle. So it inherits a bunch of other things. So now that we understand inheritance, let's talk about what actually goes in a class. So similar to our example of how we have a chair and furniture, things in the real world have properties, right? So a chair might have a size, a color, a finish, a material, and a chair can do stuff, right? Like you can sit on a chair, um, so on and so forth. So my point of saying all that is in a class, we can put variables and we can put functions. So a, a car, let's stick with car instead of vehicle. A car can have a function, let's say drive. And a car can also have a color. Well, let's stick with string for now. A car can also have a, let's say model. Whatever would go in there. So 
the notion is you can put variables, properties, these are actually called variables, whether they're uh, constants or variable or static in here, and we could also put functions in here. Now, let's talk about another thing before we switch over to structs. And let's just get rid of um, these other classes, and let's, now that we understand inheritance, let's, uh, let's just stick with this class. So, cool. So now, this is going to be yelling at us in just a second when we try to use this class. Um, for one for one key reason classes need initializers now what does that mean so let's say we put let's say we have this car and we put two constants in here so we have let um, make and that's going to be a string and we say let color and that's also going to be a string we'll come over here and we're going to see that there's an error and what this is complaining about is we don't have an initializer so what's an initializer if you're familiar with a constructor, an initializer is the same thing. If you're not familiar, oh, I'm glad you're here. So an initializer is a special type of function that helps you create a instance of this class. So let's say we want to create BMW. Let's say a variable BMW, and we want to create a car. Um, and this is how we would create an instance of this class. This is yelling at us because what we said here is we have the, these two these two um, constants, and they're both strings, but we haven't assigned them to anything, right? Like there's nothing in front of this string, and it's yelling at us because it doesn't know what they should be. So what we can do is we can provide something called init, and init is a special type of function that helps you initialize the class, right? And what you can do in here is you can pass in, similar to any function, you can pass in parameters like so, if I can spell it correctly. So we can have color, and we can have a make. And what we want to say in here is we want to say self dot color equals color, and self dot make equals make. So let me explain this because this actually gets a little a little annoying for some people. And this is complaining here because we're not using the initializer, so we'll fix this in a second. So what we're saying here is when you create this car, use this function, right? Even though we don't have the word func here, in init is a special type of function. And it requires, as we have said here, two parameters for a color and a make. Both of their types are strings. And in this actual function body, in this initializer body, we're saying self.make is make and self.color is color. Now notice the color distinction and notice that we're using self. Dot. What we're saying is for this instance of this class that we're creating, assign the incoming parameter value to the respective value here. That's signified by the self. Dot. And that's really all that means. So when you say self.color equals color, the self.color is the color up here, and the thing on the right of the equal sign is the color that's coming in as a parameter. So if you if we want to see this being used, we can say something along the lines of var BMW equals car. And when we open this, we get this autocomplete. And notice it wants a color as a string. And we can say, let's say something like blue and make, we already called our variable BMW, so, whoops, now we have to use BMW, of course, um, but of course we can use something else as well. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the nat nature of an initializer, and it's super important because as you can imagine, um, a class by default might not have a value assigned to the constants and variables that it has inside of it, and, it, you might want that class to be configurable to a degree. So let's say here we create another version of a car. Let's say we call this car two. This could be like Honda and this could be red. It basically gives us the flexibility to pass in whatever we want and create instances of this car with varying configurations. Now it keeps saying the word instance. So what the heck does that mean? An instance is just a uh, occurrence of that object that you've stored into your variable, right? So the type of this is a 
car, that's the class, and it's a car. It's We're initializing a car with these properties. And that's really all that a car, uh, or rather a class is. Now, a class versus a struct. So a struct is almost exactly the same thing as this. So let's actually, let's literally call this a struct. And notice that everything works as we expect. Nothing has changed, nothing is broken. Um, so what gives? What's the difference between a struct and a class? The key difference, and I really want you to understand this, as this is a guaranteed interview question for Swift and iOS, is a class is a reference type and a struct is a value type. So what I what I I'll, I'll explain it and then what I want to do is I want to showcase it with an example. So a class, when you create an instance of a class, like this BMW down here, this BMW is an instance of this class. When we say, let's say we do var car2 equals BMW, what do, what do you think happens with this? Would we be would we be saying this car2 is pointing to BMW or are we creating another instance of car? That's where the key difference comes up with classes and structs. If this was a class, right now we've changed it to a struct, what it would happen is this car2 variable would actually point to BMW. So if anything changed on this BMW variable, by proxy, this car2 variable would change too. So an example would be, like we've passed in this color. If we change the color to, let's say, yellow, and then we say, okay, car2, what's your color? It's going to reference everything from the BMW variable. The difference of a struct is because this is a struct right now, when we say car2 equals BMW, what this has done under the hood is it's created a copy of B whatever BMW is assigned to and assigned it to car2. And they're totally different values. So if we say car1, car, if we say BMW's color is now purple and this variable is this new car, this car2, its color is now magenta, we have purple and magenta totally as separate values on two different objects, two different structs. So with a class, then it would the nature of it would be car2 would be pointing to BMW, and as BMW changes, car2 changes. In a struct, car2 is totally separate from BMW. However, when you say car2 equals BMW, what it will do is it'll start, it'll create an instance of the car in here by whatever the values in BMW currently are. So it'll create a copy of it. So I really want you to remember this because it's really important. And um, I've, I've interviewed many candidates that don't have a strong understanding of this. And I know this is a point where people struggle and they fail to realize what the importance of this is until they're kind of down the rabbit hole in an app and they're like, shoot, I should have used a struct here instead of a class. But they, other than that, they are very similar. Both classes and structs can have uh, variables, constants, statics, functions. They get created in a very similar fashion. So the name of the structure of the class and open close parentheses. In the parentheses, if you have an initializer, you put the parameters. Um, you do the self dot color or self dot whatever your parameter name is. Your property name equals that parameter. Uh, very, very similar. Um, well, actually, literally identical. Um, the key difference, again, is reference type versus value type. And I hope that's clear. And that is where I'm going to wrap this up for uh, this lesson. So we went over classes and structs. And we're going to start basically combining a lot of the pieces that we've been learning over the past few lessons. So things like types and constants and variables and now classes and um, functions. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next lesson. Please do leave a like, um, follow for more content, leave some comments, feedback, suggestions. All of it is very much so appreciated. And I'll see you in the next lesson.